In this video, we're going to look at evaluating a function uh, for a given value. So I've got this function up here, f of x equals negative 4x squared minus 7x plus 9. So the first thing that you really want to make sure you're comfortable with is the notation for functions. This, I read this, f of x. The first time you see function notation, it looks like f times x where f is some variable and x is some other variable, but that is totally not what's happening here at all. Um, what we have is f of x. We have a function f, and it's going to be evaluated at a variable x. In other words, we're going to take x and plug it in to this equation over here. A lot of times when I'm first teaching functions, I'll remind the students that f of x is really the same as y. I could rewrite this whole thing as y equals negative 4x squared minus 7x plus 9 and it's basically the same equation. This is function notation up here in black and this is just written with two different variables here in red but it's the same exact thing. So let's say we want to evaluate this function at one-third. So in function notation I would I would write it like this. I would say find f of one-third. What that means is plug one-third in for x up here. If I was doing it uh, with with the equation in two variables, I would say find y when x equals one-third. If I gave you that equation and told you to find y when x equals one-third, you just take one-third and plug it in for all that stuff. If I give you this function notation and tell you to find f of one-third, then you just plug one-third in where all the x's are. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. Wherever there's an x, I'm going to put a one-third. So there's two spots I need to put x's here. I'm sorry, two spots I need to put one-thirds. Now from this point, it's just a matter of arithmetic and order of operations. It's nothing fancy. It's just working the problem out. As a reminder, let's write our order of operations, parentheses or grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication, division, those are equals, we do them left to right, and addition, subtraction, those guys are equals, we do them left to right. Addition does not always come before subtraction, and multiplication does not always come before division, it depends which one's first. In this problem, it looks like we have some parentheses here, a lot of people say, oh well I have parentheses, but Parentheses really means to simplify what's inside the parentheses when we're talking about the order of operations, and this is already simplified inside the parentheses. The parentheses in this case are really just standing for multiplication. So the next thing we're going to look at is exponents. We do have an exponent here, one-third squared. So we're going to bring down the negative four, and we're going to do one-third squared. Now I'm going to keep these parentheses because in this case it means multiplication. I still need to multiply my answer by negative four. One squared is one and 3 squared is 9. And that's as easy as it is for um, squaring fractions. A lot of people think that's tough. It's not. You just square the top, square the bottom, you're done. Alright, I'll bring the rest of this down and we'll go to the next step, which would be multiplication or division. Well, don't have any division. Technically a fraction is a division problem, but if you divide it you're going to get a decimal and we're not putting these in decimals. We're going to keep it in a fraction. So we're not going to do that division. We're going to do the multiplication. So we're going to take negative 4 times 1 ninth. And some of you are really good at this and already have the answer in your head. Those of you out there that are still struggling with fractions a little bit. Remember when you multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerators and the denominators. If you have a whole number like negative 4, that 4, actually a number like 4, negative 4 is an integer positive 4 is a whole number technically, but if you have a number that's not a fraction like an integer like negative 4, that's the same as negative 4 over 1. Sometimes it helps to write that in there. 7 is the same as 7 over 1. Once you get used to that, you don't have to write that over 1 stuff because you can see it in your head that you're going to multiply the 4 times the 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. 1 times 9 is 9. Now this negative, you can think of it with the negative 4, or you can think of it out in front like negative 4 ninths. That's probably the best way to think of it at this point is negative 4 ninths. Over here then, we're going to bring down our minus 7 thirds plus 9. Well, at this point, we need to get a common denominator. So let's get a common denominator of uh, 9. 
you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do these two fractions first. A lot of times when you have just adding a whole number at the end, you can kind of do it in your head. So let's just do the fractions and see what we've got. I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3 to change it to ninths. And bring the negative 4 ninths down. Minus 7 times 3 is 21 ninths plus 9. When you're adding or subtracting fractions, you add or subtract the numerators. So negative 4 minus 21 is negative 25 ninths plus 9. Now some of you guys might want to change this 9 to 81 over 9 and get a common denominator. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and finish it this way. Negative 25 ninths. Now I'm going to divide. I have an improper fraction. So 9 goes into 25 um, two times negative 2 and how many are left over let's see 18 so that'd be 7 so I've got this now negative 2 and 7 ninths plus 9 which is really the same as 9 minus 2 and 7 ninths that's the same thing so 9 take away 2 would be 7 take away 7 ninths more would be 6 and 2 ninths if I lost you there let me show you this other way that you can do it. Let's go this way with the blue arrow. I could change, I could keep the 25 ninths and then change the 9 into ninths, which would be 81 ninths. 81 divided by 9 is 9. And then do negative 25 plus 81 on the top, which is the same as 81 take away 25, which is 56 over 9. And of course, 56 over 9 is the same as 6 and 2 ninths. So you could do it either way with the fractions. Whichever way makes more sense to you is the way that you should do it. But back to the main concept of evaluating a function for a given value. It's just a matter of plugging in whatever number is in there for x. That's going to go where the x's are. You're going to put that number in for x. Whatever is in this parentheses, that goes in where the x's are. And then just make sure you follow your order of operations and watch out for those things like positives and negatives and fractions and denominators and stuff like that. Then it becomes a problem from your past. Hope that helps and makes functions a little easier to understand.